It's game week seven prediction time. And with me this evening to go through all our picks for how we think the games are going to go this week is my co-host, Mark Ryman. How are you getting on this evening, Mark? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks, Ollie. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Looking forward to Friday night under the lights where it all kicks off. It certainly does, and I, I know which game you're going to go to as well. Nice little <laughs> short trip for the Luton fans down to Plymouth on a Friday night. But before we talk about that game, just a reminder, if you're watching this on our YouTube, why not like and subscribe to our channel for even more championship content? But now it's time to talk about Friday Night Under the Lights at Home Park. So, Wayne Rooney's Plymouth Argyle take on Luton Town. Are we not doing Rob Edwards' Luton Town? Is it only Wayne Rooney that gets this now? Uh, I don't think <laughs> Rob Edwards is a Champions League winner. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, not, he certainly isn't. So... This is a bit of an interesting one because Luton on the back of back-to-back -back wins and Plymouth, they obviously had that very fortunate win. Well, hard-earned win against Sunderland. So how do you see this one going? Yeah, and obviously I lost against West Brom, didn't they, in the last game. Um, I don't think it's as simple as... Uh, if you just look at the scores, it's pretty, it's pretty, go, it'll pretty obviously go to Luton, but I, I don't see it that way. Um Luton have, have got two wins off the back of the probably one their two worst performances apart from Burnley in the first game. Um I'm I'm gonna predict a Luton win um because um I haven't seen enough from Plymouth apart from Whitaker that suggests that they can they can really cause um teams a lot of harm. But they did put up a good fight against West Brom, who are the informed team in the championship in the top of the league. So I think it's going to be tough. I've put Luton 2, Plymouth 0. I might have done that on the same evening as the game, feeling all positive. But it really does depend if Luton are going to continue with the same system we persisted with all season. Because if they do, I think it's going to be a lot tighter than that. Yeah, something has to change at Luton Town on the pitch. And I've gone the same. I've gone Luton 2, Plymouth 0 as well. Um, I think that's mainly just very positive thinking hoping that Colton Morris has bagged his brace hopefully Colton Morris starts up top with Elijah Adebayo so you see those two playing together again um, because you know between them 21 goals in the Premier League you'd just be insane not to play Colton and Elijah together but there is there is difficulty in that Plymouth side you know you mentioned Morgan Whitaker and and you know, they've had some very decent performances. So we'll see how that game plays out. And anything can happen under the lights. But on to the next one. We have Blackburn Rovers versus QPR. Yeah, so an interesting game, one at the Derby. Uh, fair bit of bite in it. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Um, <laughs> it was tasty. Um, I it was, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I'm sure we'll think of something um, in a bit, something to get stuck your teeth into. Uh, right, okay, <laughs> anyway, I, I think they, I, I mean, Preston did very well, didn't they, to hold on when, um, with 10 men for as long as they did. I know, obviously, Blackburn got a man sent off as well later on. Um, they've been full of goals up until that game, and I was quite surprised um, that it ended in the score that it did. I still think there'll be goals in this one, though, Um and the way QPR play at the moment, they're never out of games. Um, they they always are going to score and phrase a hell of a player. He seems to have everything, which is uh, frustrating. But I think I'm going to go with a Blackburn win just on the back of their recent form. Just though, I've gone a 2-1 win to Blackburn for this one. So I don't think Blackburn's form is sustainable, but I just think they're no. not going to wobble this week. It's a tough one, though, because QPR haven't lost in the last five. Only one win, though, which, you know, yep. it's not great. But to be honest, if, you, if you're hoping to be upper mid-table, pushing for those playoffs, and Marty Fuentes is a very good manager, but I just feel you can't really take Blackburn's last performance against Preston sort of too much to mind because Derby games, form goes out the table... Yep. People play up, 
people play down people take a bite out of the opposition <laughs> yeah you, know, you just can't account for it it not, nothing goes by the script does it <laughs> No, I love the lines when reaction is just like, didn't care either. It's like, look, this guy's literally just taking a chunk out of my shoulder and he's just like, yeah, but no, go, come on, mate. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yes. And it, if you've seen the pictures as well, ooh, Awful. absolutely horrendous. Yeah, ooh. yeah Louis so, Suarez eat your heart out, mate. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, quite, quite literally. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I do think Blackburn will continue this week. I do think that their form's going to drop off. So I've gone Blackburn 2, QPR 1. But I don't think it's going to be so easy for Blackburn this week. Um, to be honest, I think that might be a bit too skewed towards Blackburn just because they haven't lo lost yet this season. But honestly, who knows? Who knows? Like it, It's predictions. It's impossible to predict these games. And on to the next one. Derby County versus Norwich. Mm. On to the most unpredictable teams in the championship, both of them. Pretty much, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, really are. I mean, Norwich absolutely smashed Watford. Thank you, Norwich, for doing that, by the way. Um, it, particularly in the second impartial. half. It, impartial. Uh, absolutely impartial. I, just, it, I, I was pleased for Norwich. It's got nothing to do with anything to do with Watford whatsoever. I was just pleased that their attackers clicked in that game. Um, Derby, on the other hand, um, go one minute from... from you know, not having a single attack in a game to, to scoring three goals in two consecutive games. It's really difficult. Um, Derby only narrowly lost against Sheffield United. You'd probably say that that, that scoreline flattered Derby a little bit. Um, Sheffield United aren't very good at killing teams off at the moment. Um, I think that's a fair, fair reflection on how they've done, but they, they did dominate that game. Um, and Norwich, because of their big win, I, I'm going to see them backing it up, but I've gone 2-1 Norwich because Pride Park is a tough place to go at, at the moment. Derby County have got a decent record there, so I've gone 2-1 Norwich, but it'll be close. So I've gone very similar. I've gone 3-1 Norwich for a lot of the same reasons as you, really. Um, th interestingly, this is 10th versus 11th, but I don't think this is where these two teams are going to be finishing the season. To be honest, uh, I feel Derby will probably be a bit lower uh, and Norwich will be a lot higher. And as you said, yeah, Norwich, ooh, mm. they really stepped on the gas in that second half. And yeah. I feel it's starting to click. So I feel this is where they start to rise up through the table. And that's why I see some goals there. I just, I don't think Derby will have enough for them. And to be honest, I think predicting a derby goal in this in the 3-1 loss i think is quite optimistic to be honest but hey derby have shut us up before we've had to apologize to derby so who knows honestly yeah who knows um fair play derby like well done you know three wins three losses it's like one or the other like you know they're still waiting for a draw for all we know they could draw with norwich it could happen. It could happen, especially as we both predicted um, a, a win. It's almost certainly going to happen. Right, on to the next one. Sheffield Wednesday versus Carlos Corbrand's West Brom. <laughs> Carlos Corbrand gets his own one, and that's absolutely fair enough. You know my feelings on West Brom. I've made them clear throughout every single one of these. And, yeah, they, they made life a bit difficult for themselves against Plymouth. I think Plymouth did well, and it took, it took a while for West Brom to take it take the win um, and make the 1-0 although I think we both did predict that it would be more difficult um, than than a walkover Wednesday can count themselves unlucky to not get anything from Luton I think we can fairly say that um, they uh, the, the Luton win certainly undeserved whether Wednesday deserved to win it mm, I'm not sure but you'd think that um, after having the better of the, the play in midfield and scoring that goal, that they will feel bad about that. And that's two games on a bounce now where they can feel aggrieved. Obviously, the QPR game and then the Luton game, I think that's going to kill their confidence. And you couple that with West Brom. I've got a West Brom 2-0 win for that reason. Okay, so I've also gone for a West Brom win. I've gone 2-1. But I do think it's going to start getting a bit much for Danny Roll. Obviously, the intensity of the English Championship compared to where he's come from. You know, results are expected. And, you know, with 
death on chancery who knows who knows like whether yeah. you know if if there's another another incident that's out of danny roll's hands like you never know chancery might just be like right i've had enough you're gone like even though he did so well last season yeah. just because it's not going so well this season he might get the bullet you never know yeah. I really um, hope that's not the case. I really do, though. I mean, I can see them. I can see a style of play, and I think it will come good if they give him time. But you're absolutely right. Chancery is a law unto himself. Yeah, um, for that reason, I've gone West Brom two, Sheffield Wednesday one. I do think they'll nick something because they did look really dangerous in spells against Luton. Jan Valery very busy on mm -hmm. you know right wing, yep. very busy, and they look solid enough at defence. But I think. West Brom, they have that way of cutting people apart. Like Swift is back to his best. Josh Madger just is firing on all cylinders. He's ridiculous. I saw the second tier pod uh, liken him to Filippo Inzaghi. I see that, you know, he's pretty devastating. Like in that six yard area, you know, no yeah. silly misses. No, you know, he's not wasteful. He's absolutely lethal. I wonder what the odds were on him being the top scorer in the championship at the start of the season. A pretty long, I imagine. Yeah, yeah they, they yeah. would have been crazy odds. Not like 5,000 to 1 like Leicester. Uh, no. But they would have been pretty big. Um, yeah, but I, you know, West Brom, I don't see them getting their first loss this week. They'll, they'll keep cracking on. Right, on to Hull City versus Cardiff City. Cardiff City are a mess, aren't they? Um... You called it. I think literally the uh, the the bullet was going to go, and he went. I don't know whether you can correct me on this, Ollie, or, or Cardiff fans. Whether he'd only signed a new contract in the summer. I thought he had, but I might be wrong on this one. But if he has, then that's a very expensive uh, month and a bit of football, isn't it? Um, they absolutely look all over the place. They look incapable of scoring goals, and they're leaky at the back as well. Uh, not a good combination. Hull, on the other hand, um, still have a fair bit to prove for me for the side they are, but it was a convincing win in the end. I know they were 1-0 down against Stoke, but as soon as they scored that equaliser, Stoke collapsed completely and Hull just took advantage of it. And they've got the players to do that at home against probably at the moment the poorest side in the league. Hull City 2, Cardiff 0. I can't, I can't see anything other than a Hull win. I've also gone Hull City 2, Cardiff 0. It's a weird one because, yeah, Tim Walter, he did get his first win, but that was against Stoke. And Stoke are all kinds of a mess at the moment. Regarding Cardiff City, I recently made a video about what's going wrong at Cardiff City. And I'll, I'll link it in the description of this video as well. So if you're interested in wider championship news, just that video it's an interesting one watch it after this one why not back to back and you know they've scored one goal this year it's terrible, and, isn't it and yeah. there's, who's gonna take over who's gonna well you know, i know welshman no. <laughs> yeah you're right you're right yeah yeah we're um, talking about Jeff on chancery like vincent tan's just yeah. as worse well, he's worse he's, he's much worse um and you, yeah, I, I know. I'm going to take the words out of your <laughs> mouth right now. You're going to say Nathan <laughs> Jones. But realistically, is Nathan Jones going to want to jump ship? He's just got the band back together <laughs> at Charlton. Nathan, Nathan Jones jumping ship. Doesn't sound like him. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Although he'll either go there. He won't go because of that. Or he'll go in it and Luke Berry and Dan Potts and Danny Hilton will soon follow after. But yeah, I think... He's always talked about uh, Cardiff as his club, but I think you're right. At the moment, um, he's got too much of a good thing um, at Charlton, and they could easily be swapping places at the end of the season. So, well, we'll see. Yeah, well, he also said Stoke was his club and Southampton was his he club. He certainly Barcelona did. Barcelona was his club. Yeah. To be honest, anyone that would offer him a contract, that was his club. And he, has, <laughs> he somehow has close ties with pretty much every single club in the 72 as well. <laughs> Um, like, whatever club gives him a, a job offer like he has like a, a cousin a niece yeah. like someone yeah. that used to groom his dog who <laughs> had an affiliation with that club uh, he's always ready to, to jump yeah, yeah, yeah. the opportunity isn't he yeah, um, it, but yeah Cardiff it, are a mess 
They really, they really are. They need someone to sort it out and soon, don't they? They really do. Yeah, well, to be honest, I, it's more likely going to be my prediction coming true than yours. But to be honest, I think they'll be lower than 20th. Yeah. Where's that Chris Willock magic that you promised? Well, I, I, I think, yeah, exactly. And, and I suppose that that's part of the problem as well, isn't it? That reliance on on one or two players finding form that haven't got it when they haven't got a defence or, or any build-up play. I, I think that's they, they're, they're not creating anything at all from what I've seen of them. Um, it's difficult for players like that to thrive. But yeah, I mean, I think it's just a shame for the championship we don't see Chris Willock back to Chris Willock's best because he was, when he was in form, was one of the most exciting players in the league by miles. It's just, I'd like to see it again, but not the moment, clearly. Well, you know who could do that? Neil Warnock. Love to see Neil Warnock back at Cardiff. Did they not end quite acrimoniously when he left? That's the only thing I can't remember. He tends to, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. But yeah, um, he'll come out of retirement for the millionth time. Yeah, never never count him out. Right, <laughs> oh, I never do. Absolute, absolute heavyweight clash here. We got Leeds United versus Coventry. Oh, Cov. Yeah, things things are getting. I mean, this could be Luton. You know, if those two games weren't weren't wins and, and and both of them went the other way, this this could be the narrative with with Luton quite easily. You know, we've we've lauded Coventry, both of us, and and most other you know um, podcasts and shows have put Cov Cov up there in their predictions. You know, we we certainly aren't standouts in this. We know how good their attack is. We know how good their manager is. We know how slow their starts are. But this is a pretty tough game to try and change that tide. I've I've gone for a 1-1. One, one, um, and I've gone for a 1-1 one, one because I feel like Leeds haven't completely convinced me either. They beat Cardiff 2-0. Leeds fans still complained at the end of that game that it should have been more. Um, especially having the one-man advantage for a lot of the game as well. And... I, I don't know. I can I can feel like up against it when the pressure's off, if you like, a bit more with Coventry, this could be their opportunity to get points. So I've gone one one. Um, but it, it could go quite heavily against Coventry. Who knows? I've gone the same. I've also right. gone one one for this one. Um it's not all glory days at Leeds. Uh the fans are not convinced with Daniel Farker's football. Um Yes, against Cardiff, it should have been five or six. They had all the ball, like li literally 80% of the ball. And they were pressing the entire time. And it, it should have been a lot more. Leeds fans want blood. Leeds fans are a very vocal fan base. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, yes, Kov do have an embarrassment of riches up top. It will click. And even though I've gone for a 1-1 one, one here, I, I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Cov did spring a surprise at, an, at, at Ellen Rhodes. Like, imagine if, if Leeds don't, you know, score relatively early, the crowd get on the back and, you know, it can get very hostile yeah. there. There are a lot of people. Imagine if Cov score early, you know, it could get pretty bad, but... For this, I think Kov just need to get a point from this one just to stop the rot. Um, a win would be better for them because they've only got one win so far. But yeah, as you said, their starts are always very slow. So I'm yeah. not really very concerned for them right now. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and as you said, you know, pressure's off a little bit for this game. So hopefully they can get something from it. And I mean, Leeds fans are a funny bunch as well um, in terms of what they want. I think Farker, Farker's a, a proven manager. But yeah, they did bottle it last season. Um, and there is that. But I, I think since Bielsa left, that then no one's going to fill that void, Leeds fans. Then no, no one is going to be another Bielsa. I think that is part of the problem for Leeds fans. Sorry, that that that. that is almost an impossible task for someone to fill as well. But uh, it yeah, is. it's promotional bust, isn't it? Oh yeah, that as well. Like with their wage bill mm. and the, the talent they have in their team, like if they want to hold on to certain players, they, they've got to go up. They do. Otherwise it could be a very long stretch in the championship like they had previously before Bielsa turned up at Ellen Rhodes. Right. On to the next one. We have 
Middlesbrough versus Stoke City. Uh, Stoke City. Oh, dear. Um, I shouldn't laugh, but, you know, there must be some Stoke fans sort of half finding this a bit, like, amusing in a terrible way as well. I mean, a, a team that that I can't remember when they came down from the Premier League, but when was it? Five, six years ago. It's going to be a, it's a long time ago. It feels like forever since Stoke were in the Prem. And they've never got above mid-table in that time. They've always been around 15th, 16th. And, and every year it's a change of manager. I must admit the change of manager to a goal pe- goalkeeping coach from Norwich did sort of surprise me slightly. Um, who knows how he gets on. But Borough, on the other hand, I know that they haven't had the results. I think they were unlucky to lose against Sunderland. I really do. I think they had the better of the game. And if it wasn't for that inspired finish by uh, Chris Rigg, I think that that they should have at least got a point from that. I can't see anything other than Borough winning this. I said that against when Borough played Preston and they drew, but 3-1 to Borough for me. and, And that's being generous to Stoke. Sorry, Stoke fans. People are going to think that we're, you know preparing these prior i've also gone middlesbrough three <laughs> stoke one oh, it was, well it's stoke's fault really isn't it for their a complete collapse against hull what else are we going to predict yeah <laughs> I, I i feel i'm being very optimistic here because middlesbrough, middlesbrough's only win in the last five has come against cardiff and it's such a shame that Luton Town didn't get a chance to play Cardiff because they, they've mm. seemed like a very easy touch, easy three points. Um, but yeah, they were unfortunate against Sunderland. I feel they played up because Sunderland are just a juggernaut right now. Um, and But Stoke, uh, it's they're just a mess right now. It's It's impossible to predict a win for them. Who knows? Who knows what will happen with them? And how long is this fella going to last? A goalkeeping coach? Seriously? Mm. I just... I It doesn't understand. Like All the previous appointments made sense. Nathan Jones, Gary Rowett, Michael O'Neill, um, uh, Alex Neal. They all mm. made sense because they were all managers that had experience uh, as a head coach, had all... Uh, had success with their respective clubs and in the case of Michael O'Neill like a really really bad footballing nation and they, they've gone for someone who hasn't got their head coach experience is a goalkeeping coach and may, maybe it's just a case of they feel the coach family feel or John Waters I think it's John Waters it's that John is making Waters, these yeah. decisions they think maybe if I go completely the opposite direction maybe something will work i'm surprised they didn't hire the tea lady to take over i was gonna say what the opposite direction to any club ever by just randomly grabbing coaching staff it was it it felt like they just needed to fill the void like just let's not hang around let's just get someone in i don't know let's have a look norwich they've got a spare keeper coach let's have them you know um, it's it yeah you're right it, it doesn't make any sense it's whatsoever it makes yeah. no sense uh, for me, they could be the big team that goes down this year. Now, I, I really think they could do. I, I, I know that that they've got a far better squad than that, but they always have done, you know. Um, and and every year or every few years in the championship, there's a big team that suffers. And and Stoke have flirted with it, you know, a few a few times. I think that if 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 this goes as badly as it could do, they're going to be in real trouble this season. Yeah, they're circling the drain, mm. no doubt. They have been for years, similar to Cardiff. You know, yeah. remember Cardiff? They were, I think they might have got relegated the same season. Yeah, as Stoke. Was it? Um, right. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I think so. Someone, someone in the comments, please correct me if, if you know. Please, if mm. you're a Stoke fan or a Cardiff fan, let me know. Um, yeah, they're in trouble. They really are. Yeah, and, and unlike Cardiff, who Tan doesn't feed the money back into the club in the same way. You know, Stoke have got the Coates family who will throw money at it and always have thrown money at it as well, which makes it even more ridiculous that they've done so poorly in the last few years. Yeah, it's yeah. it's mad. It, it it doesn't compute. Right, on to Millwall versus Preston North End. How do you see this one going? I see a Millwall win 
for this one. I think, you know, Preston got very lucky um, to keep it at nil-nil. Um, I think Dolan hit the post from point blank as well in that game. That was basically the only chance. Like, nothing happened for 30 minutes, as for what, apart from, like, sporadic fights breaking out around the pitch, which, you know, don't get me wrong, is, you know, pure entertainment, but there weren't any shots. Um, so, I, and I think that, you know, Preston have, have done have done a bit better than I thought they would, particularly in bigger games. Obviously, they did very well against Luton and they did well against Borough um, as well. But Millwall at home, I see them taking this one. I've gone 2-1 Millwall for this. I've gone <laughs> nil-nil. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I've gone 2-1 as well. Right. I've gone nil-nil. And I think this is going to be a really boring game <laughs> i watch it though it's gonna it's gonna end up being goals galore five four or something i think it's gonna be a really boring game i yeah. think woodman's gonna have a, a blind i think liam Lindsay's going to stop pretty much everything else coming through mm. as well because he plays up i think liam Lindsay is a fantastic defender um genuinely and yeah. uh i i feel there's gonna be two very blunt strike forces here um but I could be wrong. Who knows? Plenty of long throws. Plenty yeah, of long be, throws. It's going it's to be aerial bombardment. Liam Lindsay heading them yeah. all out. I guess we'll see. Nil-nil for that one. Yeah. On to Oxford United versus Burnley. Uh, yeah, Oxford had a, a poor result. I think we both predicted it would go the other way for Oxford in the last game. Um, and they lost um, against Bristol City. Um, yeah. I, I think that um, they've done brilliantly. They have done, and um, particularly they, they've done well at home. And I think if they look, any team that wants to stay up, you keep your home form, you're fine. Um, it must be the atmosphere from uh, that that end behind the goal that, that's the, keeping the, them going. The car park, the car park, the car park is, is wild. <laughs> it goes wild, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, 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 just that people honk. <laughs> Honk if you want to go. Honk, honk, honk. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it's their home form. Although I think this will be the exception. I just think Burnley are too strong. And also, the way that Scott Parker plays, he's not afraid to have no possession at all. It's the opposite to Vincent Company in this. How much possession they have against Leeds? Something like 25%. It was ridiculously low. I, I think he will quite happily play on the counter-attack. Um, which Burnley do in devastating fashion. Sarmiento now playing for them, who is an absolute player. I'm gutted that that Luton didn't try and get him. He's just such a good player um, when he was on loan for Ipswich last season as well. They are scoring a lot of goals from miles out as well, as they did actually when they won the championship the last time. I, I see it being tight, but I think Burnley are going to win it 1-0. Ah, so I've gone Oxford 1, Burnley 1. I'm backing Oxford here. Home mm. form has been great. Three home wins. It's the away form where they, you know, they keep it tight all the time. I don't think they're going to be open and expansive. I think they're yep. going to try and keep Burnley in front of them. Uh, it's going to be maybe two counter-attacking teams, but I think Burnley are going to be camped in, in the Oxford half, and Oxford are going to be the ones countering here. Yep. So, but I'm I'm backing Oxford. I, I feel they have enough strong performance of the Sam. So one one for that one. Uh, on to another promoted team, Portsmouth versus Sheffield United. Yeah, I predicted uh, the Portsmouth game to be a lot wider than it was, actually. They could probably count themselves pretty unlucky to lose it in the last minute. Um, so they lost 2-1, didn't they, against Burnley in the last game. I think they're going to lose 2-1 again, though. Um, Sheffield United haven't been convincing, but they keep managing to find a way to win. Um, and they've got the players to do it. I, I think when you've got people like Gus Hamer playing for you, it's really difficult to bet against it. Um, so for me... With with the lack of uh, attacking depth that Port, that Pompey have, even though they're at home, I'm going to go with a tight two one win to Sheffield United, but it will be tight. I'm backing Portsmouth here. I've got <laughs> Portsmouth one, Sheffield United nil, and this is not to disrespect Sheffield United fans, as you said, as a lot of people have said. The football has has been good, but there's mm. no end product. You know, they won 1-0, 
they they were completely dominant in the last game, but they relied on a Gus Hamer free kick, and that was a fantastic free kick. Was. They have an embarrassment of riches in their team. They they really do. But all it takes is for them just not to be able to hit the back of the net, concede a goal, and then they've lost, essentially, because I feel if they concede a goal, heads will drop. It's a, it's still a very um, new team. They they they're betting in a lot of new people, so they'll find out a lot about themselves if they go a goal down. Uh, and they haven't lost yet, so we'll see what happens. I'm I'm predicting a one 0 Remember, I did, I did back Plymouth to beat Sunderland. I must have been the only person on the face of the planet to have done that. So I'm calling this one. I think Sheffield United's first loss of the season is coming at Fratton Park. That's my thought on that one. It could happen. Like I said, I, I think it'll be tight either way for the same reason. So every chance. Yeah. Uh, but it's championship. Anything can happen. And mm. on to Watford versus Sunderland. I'm going to stay in Sunderland's good books here, but only just, I think... <sighs> Do you know what? I, I, I was tempted to go for a 1-1 here. I was. I I, I feel like Sunderland's uh, are going to run out of, of steam a little bit. It's the thing with a young team. It will happen at some point. I mean, at that magical goal that they scored against Borough deserved to win a match just on its own. That was incredible. I mean, back healing it in from that angle is a joke. And that's the, the great thing about youth play, uh, having such a, a youthful side. I, I think that uh, Watford, on the other hand, look like they are going to revert to type and start sliding down the league, which is where, look, even Watford fans had them right down the, the lower end um, of the table. I don't think either of us put them in the relegation zone, actually, but there are plenty of Watford fans that did predict they would finish in the bottom three at the start of the season. Um, they haven't got the depth in squad. They've still got some standout players. Um even if they don't all play all the time. I've noticed that uh, Loser's playing today in the Cup, so that'll be interesting to see if he's back in the fold. But generally, I, I, I don't see them having the depth to do it. Sunderland, I'm, I've got Nick in it, 2-1, um, but it could easily be a draw, this one. I've got a bit wider here. I've gone Sunderland 3, Watford 1. I think Watford's purple patch is over. I think mm. from now on, they're going to struggle to link wins together. Um that they needed to ride that wave whereas Sunderland yes I agree because I, I, I've also said and Sunderland fans have been on at me saying it's not luck it's not luck yes when you have a young squad there's that there's that lack of fear no one is mm -hmm. scared of doing anything you have 16 year olds or 17 year olds like Chris Rigg doing audacious things and that's what you want to see that's what makes football fantastic um but I, I do agree that they will run out of steam. They just have to because it's a young team. They, they lack that experience. And I reckon around Christmas, they'll probably start to tail off a little bit. They'll still get results after Christmas, but I don't think they're going to have the sort of explosiveness and form that they've had so far. But I've gone Suns and three, Watford one. I just, I, I can't see Watford getting anything out of this. And it's, it's at Vicarage Road as well. So, you know, it'll be some nice punishment for their fans as well. We're being neutral, remember? Oh, sorry. We're being neutral. Neutral, neutral. Let's be yeah. neutral. Because it wasn't obvious from the start already. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're not we're not enjoying the fact that Watford might get beaten again at all. Not at all. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, but yeah, another loss for Watford, um, I believe. And on to the final game. It's the Seven City Derby. My geography is terrible. It's, it's, there's a bridge. That there's a bridge. These two, I was right? going to say there's a bridge. Yeah, that's there's the a one. Bridge. And there's the M4 that I've that's driven it. on before. Yeah. 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 And uh, at, at one end of that bridge is Swansea. <laughs> and at the other end of that bridge is <laughs> Bristol City. More yeah, we'll, we'll leave it as that. That's close <laughs> enough. Yeah, that'll do. I feel like every time is a geography lesson at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> what did we have for Lancashire Derby last time we were talking about it? But yeah, um, Bristol City versus Swansea. Yeah, um, Swansea have done really well. And I think I've probably underestimated how, how well they have done. They've got a good side. Um, and... 
and I think that to get a 2-1 win away at Coventry, who, again, we've talked about, aren't in, in great shape, but um, it's really good. By all accounts, Swansea's record against Coventry is generally very good anyway. But still, Bristol City are still all over the place. It's funny, isn't it? You can change the managers, you can change all of those things. And there seems to be a DNA with Bristol City and Stoke that is unchangeable. Um, Stoke being the underperformers of the championship and Bristol City being absolutely all over the place. Like the ghost of Lee Johnson lives on in that football club. So um, streaky. It's so, so it, yeah, it's mad, isn't it? Um, maybe he's still there somewhere in the background, hiding in the dugout. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I've gone for I've gone for a Swansea win. I'm not going to underestimate them again at home. I've gone two nil. Um, I know Bristol, Bristol. Well, both of them won their last games, um, but I've gone for a Swansea win for this one. I've got a bit tighter. I've gone Swansea two, Bristol City one. What is it? Yeah, you mentioned like Bristol City, we big them up. Liam Manning's doing a wonderful job. And then they, the form just goes off a cliff. But, you know, two two losses back to back. Yes, they, they picked it up with a win. Yeah. I don't see them getting a win. And Swansea, wow. Like some of the signings have been good. Like that Brazilian fella, he looks the real deal. Ronald, I think he is. And... I feel he's got a big future. I reckon Swansea are just a stepping stone to a probably a Premier League side um, or, or or a foreign side, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, sort of similar to Gabriel Sara. He hung around at Norwich for a, a couple of seasons before going to Fenerbahce, I think. Um, yeah, Swansea, they've been very impressive, very tough to beat. And yeah, I'm going 2-1. And I think it will be a feisty derby. I'm very excited about it, but okay. Yep. So, who's your lock of the week then? Yeah, it's, it's a slightly more difficult one, this one, but based mainly on the basket case that is Stoke City, I've gone for Borough to win as my lock of the week um, at home as well. Yeah, it's a good shout. That was one I was eyeing up. Uh, I suppose I will go with Norwich because they were abs like as mm. bad as Watford were in that second half, the defence being atrocious oh, yeah i think norwich they looked clinical so norwich will be my lock of the week right well now it's your turn get your thoughts and predictions in the comments we'll put all the games down there in the in the comment section so you can copy paste and put your score predictions down as always if you've enjoyed this content please like this video it only takes a second and subscribe for even more championship content a big thank you to our audio partners, Blackstar Amplification and Carry On for keeping us sounding great. And also a big thanks to our pod sponsors, the Record Shop in Amersham. If you're down in Amersham, wherever you are in the country, go down there if you collect your vinyl. You won't be disappointed. They have so much vinyl. They have CDs. They also have guitars. If you're into music, just check it out. Right. Whoever you support, I hope you all have a great week. Come on.